Hello everyone, let's take a look at this practice problem. So we have a diagram of a cube on a 3D coordinate uh, set of coordinate axes, and we're given a formula for the electric field. The crux of the problem is asking us to find the electric flux through various faces of the cube, starting with the top face. Now the key thing here is just to make sure that we understand how to find electric flux. Remember, electric flux is equal to the integral of the surface integral of the dot product of the electric field with the area vector of the surface. If the electric field is uniform, then we can often simplify this expression into something much simpler, a more e times a thing. But this problem, unfortunately, we do not have that luxury because the electric field strength is given to us with different components and it varies with position with this y squared term here. So for this problem, we're going to want to actually dot the electric field with the different area vectors and then integrate it. So let's get to it, starting with part A of the problem, which is the top face. This means that we're dotting the electric field with the vector from the top face, which is, which is directed upwards along the y-axis. So if it's directed upwards along the y-axis, then that means our area vector, dA, is equal to, it, it's going to be in the j-hat unit direction. So dA in the positive j-hat direction. And one thing I want to get out of the way right now is that because we have a cube where every face of the cube has the exact same surface area, then dA will always have the same magnitude. Since we can see from the diagram that the edge length of the cube is 2 meters, and it's even told in the problem, that means that dA, the surface, of, the surface area of any face on the cube, is always equal to the square of that. And 2 squared is 4. So dA is always equal to 4 meters squared. So our dA for part A is 4 squared meters in the j-hat direction. So now let's take the dot product of this with our electric field formula. So that's, so E, remember, is equal to 4i minus 3 multiplied by y squared plus 2 in the j direction. For part A of the problem, where we're looking at the top face, that means that the y position we're looking at, this value right here, is going to be equal to 2 meters. Because we can see from the diagram that this top face is going to be a full edge length above the x-axis. Or above the xz plane, rather. So for part A, E is 4i minus, and then 3 multiplied by... 2 squared plus 2 multiplied by 3, which is 18. So 4i minus 18j. That is the case for part A. So dotting these two things, dotting E, A, we're dotting 4i minus 18j with 4 meter squared j. The i term can just be completely ignored, since when we take the dot product, we only multiply terms that have the same component, the same unit vector. So this is just negative 18 times 4, which is negative 72. So negative 72 newton meter squared per coulomb is the answer to part a. So that's the amount of flux through the top face of the cube. So we'll want to repeat a similar process for each other step. Each time we're just going to be taking the dot product of the electric field with the dA value. And wh whatever value we get is going to be dependent on where that face is. Part B of the problem asks about the bottom face of the cube, where we can see that y would be equal to zero. And since the surface vector, the normal vector, is going to be pointing downwards, that means that our dA in this case 
is going to be in the negative j hat direction. So negative four meters in the j hat direction. And since y is equal to zero, that means that the electric field in this case is going to be equal to 4i minus 3 multiplied by 0 squared plus 2 j hat. Which can be more simply written as 4i minus 6 j hat. So that means that for part, of the, part B of the problem, we are dotting 4i minus 6j with negative 4j. Once again, the i goes away, since it's only on the left-hand side of the equation, or of the expression. And so this is basically just the same as multiplying negative 6 by negative 4, which gives us a value of positive 24. Positive 24 newton meter squared per coulombs. So that's the amount of flux through the bottom face. Part C of the problem asks about the left-hand face of the cube. Doing the left-hand face of the cube might seem harder at first glance, because we can't as easily determine a y value, because, well, look at this face. It's at many different points on the y-axis, so we don't have a single y value to use. But fortunately, this turns out to be pretty simple anyway, due to a fairly simple trick of the dot product. We can see from looking at the diagram, that the normal vector from the left-hand face is going to be pointed towards the left, entirely in the, along the x-axis, which means there's going to be an i-hat unit vector. So dA for part c is equal to negative 4 meters in the i-direction. So if we're going to take the dot product, then we can see that in the electric field formula, that pesky y is only in the j component. So if we're going to take the dot product, whatever the y component is just completely goes away anyway. So we're just dotting 4i from the electric field formula with negative 4i from the dA that we just discovered. So the flux in this case is negative 16 newton meter squared per coulomb. And that is the flux through the left face of the cube. Now part D asks about the flux through the back face of the cube. We can see from the diagram that through the back face, the normal vector is entirely in the z axis with the k hat unit vector. And you might notice that right off the bat, there's a bit of an issue here. Because if we have the k-hat unit vector, then that means if we try to dot this with the electric field formula, which doesn't have a component with the k-hat unit vector, that means there is nothing to dot. So whatever we do there, the dot product is going to be zero. So we don't even have to try to do any math here. We can tell just from the fact that it's in a component that the electric field doesn't have, that the flux for part D is going to be zero. There is no flux through the back face. Finally, part E of the problem asks about the total flux throughout the entire surface, the entire cube. Figuring this out is simply a matter of adding up all of our flux values through each face. And the first four parts of the problem have already given us the, the numbers for four of those faces. The only faces we're missing are the front face and the right face. Now, if we look at our diagram, we can see that the front face is going to have a very similar situation as the back face, because the normal, the normal, the, the vector normal to the front face is once again a lot parallel to the Z axis, which means it has a K hat unit vector which means that if we try to dot it with our electric field formula, it is just going to be a complete zero. There is nothing to dot there. The right unit vector, or the, the right face is going to be a little trickier because we can see it's going to have an i hat unit vector, which means we can actually dot this with our field formula and get a non-zero result. 
So let's do that. So for the right face, the right face, we can see that dA is going to be equal to positive 4 meters in the i hat direction. So if we were to, to dot this with our electric field, we're just dotting the i components. So 4i from the electric field formula dotted with the 4 meters that we have here, which gives us 16 again, but positive 16. Positive 16 newton meters squared per coulomb. So that is the flux through the right face. So now we have the fluxes through all six faces. So all we have to do to find the total flux is add these all together. So the flux through the top face was negative 72. The flux through the bottom face was positive 24. The flux through the left face was negative 17. The flux through the back and front faces were both zero. And the flux through the right face was positive 16. So if we put this into a calculator, we find a total flux of negative 48. That's negative 48 Newton meters squared per coulomb. So that is the total amount of flux through the entire cube. And that is it for this problem. I know this problem is probably pretty tedious because there are a lot of steps to it and a lot of things we have to do to find the flux through all six faces of the cube. But fortunately, it's not that hard. It's just a matter of rinse and repeat using the same uh, dot product formula over and over again based on this diagram. And that should be it for this problem. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please consider subscribing as that'll help me out in making more videos like this. And if you have a question, leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to help you out as best as I can. If you have a request for a future video or you just like to hang out, uh, I've, I've got my Discord server and my alternate YouTube channels linked in the description below. So check those out if you'd like. But that's all for now and I hope you all have a lovely day. Bye-bye.